Namaste friends. Today I will discuss a key building block of Jyotish that many astrologers unfortunately ignore. The main issue with the way astrology is practiced in the modern world is that most astrologers focus on what is known as the Rasi chart. And it, it stays the same for everyone who is born in a two hour window. And we know for a fact that not everybody born in a two hour window has the same destiny or same fortune. We have a lot of examples of people born very close like twins and triplets who are considerably different from each other. And some astrologers also use a chart known as Navamsa chart and that changes once every 14 minutes. Again, we don't have enough degrees of freedom to capture the destiny of a person if you just use the Rashi and Navamsa charts. Like I said, we have the examples of twins and triplets. And the unfortunate thing is, even though people do not use them or do not use them properly, Parashara gave a lot of parameters, lot of tools. There are charts known as divisional charts or in Sanskrita they are known as Varga Chakras or Amsha Chakras. Parashara Maharshi taught 16 of those in his Magnum Vapas BPHS, Brahat Parashara Horas Astram. Basically, the basic idea is each Rashi or zodiacal sign is divided into n parts and each of those part is mapped to the 12 Rasis back and then placing those planets in those Rasis you make a chart and for each n there is a specific way you map those parts of various signs to other signs and he defined 16 charts like this if you take n as 1 that is the standard chart Rasi chart that everybody uses if you take n to be 9 that is the Navamsa chart if you take n to be 10, that is the Dasyamsa chart. So in general, the names are derived based on the value of n. And even though these charts were defined and described by Parashara Maharshi, many astrologers don't use them. And even the few who, who actually use them, they pay lip service to them. They don't really rely on them. They give a lot of importance to the Rasi chart, which we know doesn't have enough degrees of freedom to capture the destiny. Let us look at Rashi chart versus divisional charts. Rashi chart, it shows the physical positions of planets in the skies. Because we are taking n to be 1, these are actually, if a planet is, uh, for example, in Taurus, it is actually in Taurus physically. If a planet is in Cancer, it is actually in Cancer physically. So these are the physical positions of planets. And accordingly, this chart shows the physical existence of somebody. On the other hand, divisional charts are abstract, they are not physical. For example, based on which, which of the nine parts of Aries a, a planet is in, we may map it to some other zodiacal sign, right? So, this is not really physical. The Navamsa chart, the Syamsa chart, they don't exist physically. These are all abstract concepts. So, accordingly, they show various abstract environments surrounding us. For example, Somebody's physical existence is something that you can clearly see. But w when we talk about somebody's professional environment, somebody's financial environment or spiritual environment, etc., or academic environment and all these things, these are really abstract entities. So these divisional charts really show abstract concepts rather than uh, the physical self. And obviously, we care a lot about the material existence. So, even though all environments are separate, they, they intersect each other and finally they affect the material existence. So, Rashi chart is important, but the thing is, all the other environmental influences are equally important. You can't really ignore them and try to predict everything from the Rashi chart. By the way, in the rest of the talk, I will use the notation of either dn or d dash n to show the divisional chart that is obtained by dividing each Rashi, each zodiacal sign into n parts. Let me give an example. Let's use an analogy. Imagine a multi-story building. Divisional charts are like the floor plans of different floors. 
whereas rashi chart is like all the floor plans combined together because at the in the end all these various abstract environments in which one leads one's existence affect the material existence the physical existence so that is what rashi chart shows so to represent it pictorially suppose the floor one has kitchen here living room here bed he bedroom here storage room here and the floor two has library here office here meeting room here files here and so on let's say every floor has its own plan and these are analogous to the divisional charts when you combine all those to the ground floor map all those to the ground floor and just make one picture you get something confusing like this so kitchen library home theater bank etc so if there is a problem here where exactly is it is it in the kitchen library home theater bank etc it's so difficult basically just using this map figuring out what's going on in the building is next to impossible on the other hand if you look at the individual floor floor plans you can get a much clearer picture and astrologically let us see a specific example in astrology the fourth house shows a lot of things and i am showing only a small subset of that here the heart of the person mother of the person education of the person residence of the person the spiritual direction of the person career of wife the vehicle one drives etc and there are so many other things that you can see from the fourth house this is just a small subset important subset of what the fourth house shows so suppose there is an affliction in the fourth house there is a problem in the fourth house which of these will suffer is so difficult to basically deduce just like here basically let me give another analogy uh deciphering the destiny of somebody just from the rashi chart is like identifying a person from just a few digits or letters of the social security number or the pan pan card number of the person uh, navamsha chart adds a few more digits but still is not sufficient suppose you you know that somebody social security number is this you can't identify the person uniquely the person there are lot of people sharing this similarly parashrama rashi chart 16 different charts and rashi and navamsha chart change once every 2 hours or 14 minutes so a unique combination of 16 charts occurs once every 48 seconds on average so you really need all these to identify the person uniquely otherwise you are not looking at one person but you are looking at a big group of people so this is something unfortunately many astrologers don't realize they just use the rashi chart and make predictions and as a result either the predictions are unreliable or predictions work out right but basically maybe the predictions are not really significant enough maybe or maybe somebody has a really good intuition so most astrologers today rely a lot more on their intuition than the science taught by the rishis now let us before i describe what each of those 16 divisional charts parashara defined uh, show and how they can be combined because if you say each chart is separate again that's not how these numbers in the social uh, these digits in the social security number and the pan card number work right they all combine to identify the person similarly you have to combine all the different charts to decipher the destiny of the person confidently so before going through what each of those charts talk about and how they are combined i want to i want to give a philosophical basis our upanishads describe panchakoshas five uh, sheets that we are made of there is at the grossest level at the level of tamas we have the sheet of matter or annamaya kosha it is basically the animated grossest self when you when you think of pvr narasimha rao you look at this body you look at this face you look at this person who is speaking so that matter that everybody is able to perceive is the annamaya kosha and at the higher level we have something called pranamaya kosha or the sheath of life force this is the self that animates animates the physical existence so uh 
when i am when i am speaking or when i am doing something there is some prana within me there is some life force within me and this is not just a nerve current current flowing through the nervous system because that is still physical so that is part of the annamaya kosha this is basically beyond physical there is something known as life force that we that we are aware of in our philosophy in our vedic philosophy and that life force is basically captured by the pranamaya kosha at a at a more subtler level we have something called manomaya kosha the sheath of mind what we call as mind and this is the self that feels and wants so there are based on various previous lives we have some vasanas we have some conditioning we have some desires we want something we don't want something and we th- find something to be good something to be bad something to be desirable something to be undesirable all that conditioning is captured by an entity called mind and that kosha is manomaya kosha and at a, at a subtler level we have a kosha called vijnanamaya kosha this is the sheath of intellect or rather sheath of wisdom and we are not talking about rational intelligence here like discriminating between okay this is computer this is mic and this is english and this is hindi or this is my face this is not that kind of knowledge we are, talk- we are not talking about that kind of knowledge or intellect rational intellect but we are talking about the wisdom the subtle because we are talking about the force that is subtler than the force of conditioning and mind so this is the self that that is that determines that knows things and finally at the deepest level or the subtlest level we have a sheath called sheath of bliss or anandamaya kosha this is the self that enjoys this existence even though we are at the core just atman or brahman or self just the self that observes with detachment just the witness self that is what we are at the at the highest level at the subtlest level but that self has taken an individualized form like pvr narsimha rao or manish pandit or swami vekananda ramana maharshi and each individual existence has certain uh, conditioning that basically uh, that gives it bliss it has a notion that i need to do this this is my mission in this life i need to do this to be happy so basically there is a this is where the individualization starts and it becomes grosser and grosser so uh, as i showed in this picture this is at the level of sattva sattva this is at the level of sattva plus rajas this is at the level of sattva plus tamas this is rajas and this is tamas and the self the witness it is beyond these gunas beyond the trigunas now the 16 divisional charts that parashara gave map to these five koshas parashara did not describe it clearly but he showed he told us what to see in various charts and if we just apply our intelligence apply our thinking we can deduce uh, how those charts map to these koshas so i will be going through that para as i said earlier parashara taught 16 distinct charts they go from d1 to d60 of course not all the 60 numbers are have a chart corresponding to them only certain numbers have charts corresponding to them so those numbers are 16 so my deduction is uh, charts in the range 1 to 12 where n this number is between 1 and 12 cover the level of matter they cover the anamaya kosha they are at the level of anamaya kosha and if you go to the next harmonic next 12 from 13 till 24 this is the pranamaya kosha the charts in this range they cover the sheath of life force pranamaya kosha and the next harmonic next 12 25 to 36 they cover the manomaya kosha or the sheath of mind the next 12 37 to 48 they cover the vijnanamaya kosha the sheath of wisdom basically the uh, matters that they sh- throw light on are operating mainly at the vijnanamaya kosha level and then finally the chart that is in the 49 to 60 range the final harmonic the fifth harmonic they that chart there's only one chart by the way that chart covers the anandamaya kosha 
that is basically my uh, deduction and i will show i will go through each of those and talk about those charts now uh, when we talk about the charts in the range of d1 to d12 i said that they cover anamaya kosha so the rashi chart d1 shows one's physical existence what we physically consider as i as we discussed earlier and the other charts from d2 to d12 they cover what one considers as mine this is basically uh, uh, asmita and mamata i am and mine so one's physical belongings like siblings spouse children house etc so things that one physically uh, things that one associates physically they are covered by this this charts and then pranamaya kosha so the first 12 charts as i said are one himself one himself or herself physically and the other areas of life where one accumulates physical belongings once one considers this is mine then the pranamaya kosha shows what animates that existence so this shows basically the charts in this range show how you expand the prana prana is basically universal and then we based on our purva punya we have the ability to expand uh, take some of that prana and expand it in various of our activities to animate the physical existence so it shows how the prana is expanded through the ida nadi through the through the ida nadi pingal nadi and sushma nadi ida nadi is the lunar channel which is on the left side and controls the right brain it is it is basically your emotions intuition your feeling the feeling uh, this is the channel through which feeling works and pingal nadi or solar channel which is on the right side and controls the left brain it it is it is basically uh, not feeling but uh, breaking things down and understanding comprehending things so this is basically logic and analysis and this is emotion intuition and feeling and the sushma nadi that is in the middle this is basically just pure knowing this is direct perception this is what enabled rishi to perceive the absolute truth and this is closed in most people but this can basically open through sadhana so as i said the charts in this range show how we expand prana through ida sushumna and pingala and parasara taught three charts in this range one is d16 the other is d20 the other is d24 the shodashamsa uh, also known as kalamsa vimshamsa and then chaturvimshamsa are also known as siddhamsa and parasara said that this chart shows comforts and this chart shows uh, spiritual sadhana he said upasanaya vijnanam sadhyam vinse dibhagake so this is basically your spiritual sadhana and this one is learning vidyaya veda bahavamse so it is basically your vidya your learning now those are parasara's dictums sukha sukham then upasana and then vidya but the thing is they really they do they do map to the factors i mentioned earlier my deduction because comforts are when you are enjoying something you are you are basically expending prana through ida nadi so again how much ability you have to enjoy how much ability you have to uh, spend prana through the ida nadi is captured by the d16 chart so it shows your comforts and then pingal nadi it shows your ability to comprehend the world around you so that he, that happens when the prana flows through the pingal nadi so it is the ability to learn and this is not just learning at school and college formal learning but any kind of learning this is basically your ability to understand the world around you your ability to understand things in general so this is your comprehension your learning ability and finally the flow of prana through sushumna is spiritual sadhana and spiritual experience that is why d20 chart captures that now manomaya kosha is covered by charts in the range 25 to 36 as i said earlier and mind is basically nothing but vasanas to cling to some things and to run away from some things we want to we have instinctively subconsciously 
we want certain things and we want to avoid certain things we consider certain things as pleasurable and we consider certain other things as painful so all those instincts to like dislike want avoid all those are captured by manomai kosha and also uh, we have some inner weaknesses we have we have to fight the shadripus at the level of mind we have kama krodha lobha moha madha matsaryas uh, kama is desires krodha is anger uh, lobha is greed wanting something just for yourself not sharing with others kama krodha lobha moha moha is delusion that thinking that this is real things that are not really real things that are impermanent thinking that they are real and permanent for example if somebody praises me somebody sees my video or a prediction and praises me thinking that oh i accomplished this basically the universal energy working through me has done something good or maybe in another case has something bad i made a really terrible prediction and somebody is criticizing me again that is basically i am just a conduit and not realizing it and feeling excited about things feeling uh, unhappy about certain things all that is moha so kama krodha lobha moha moha is delusion confusing between real and unreal taking unreal things as real moha mada mada is wantonness some people translate it as alcohol basically addiction to alcohol etc but that's very superficial mada is really wantonness going to any extreme to get what one wants fulfill one's desires mada matsarya matsarya is jealousy if somebody has something and you don't have it feeling jealous about it not recognizing that he too is brahman you too are brahman and then depending on the karmic momentum of brahman having existence that individual existence in that container versus this container there there is different karmic momentum and so that container gets a different result and this container of self gets a different result and not recognizing it feeling jealous about somebody else's uh, good uh, fortune or success etc that is matsarya so fighting these in inner enemies is the other things and there are two charts parasara taught in this range one is d27 known as uh, saptavimshamsa or also nakshatramsa or bhamsa this chart shows instincts to avoid want or avoid by the way one interesting thing to find is if you subtract multiples of 12 this is 3 and 6 3 is the uh, the initiative inside one so the initiative inside one to want certain things or to run away from certain things so that basically is captured by d27 chart and specifically what parashara taught about d27 is he said it shows your balabalam your strengths and weaknesses so basically again it shows things that you are you like and you dislike those are your strengths and weaknesses think uh, things that that you naturally instinctively are good at or enjoy and things that you instinctively are bad at or don't enjoy those are captured by d27 and d30 trimshamsa shows six is enemies and fighting with enemies right so if you remove multiples of 12 it is six so this chart shows fighting your inner enemies kama krodha lobha moha mata matsaryas then vijnana maya kosha as i said vijnana is pure wisdom this is not really uh, normal intellectual Uh, smartness this is pure wisdom and this wisdom he lies in aligning with satyam and ratham there are two important concepts in vedic philosophy satyam and ratham satyam is what is absolute truth that is controlled by shiva and ratham is what is meant to be the divine will or cosmic will what is meant to happen at a particular time is captured by ratham so satyam and ratham ratham is controlled by shakti this is basically the cosmic potential energy and this is the cosmic kinetic energy so this is basically shiva and this is shakti or purusha and prakriti so how we are aligned with the absolute truth and absolute uh, divine rhythm cosmic will so those are those are captured by charts and parashara taught there is a typo this is two charts parashara taught two charts in this range one is d40 also known as chatvarimshamsa or kh vedamsa 04 in the, in the old days basically uh, instead of saying 40 we said 04 we basically read from right to left in the 
Vedic times. So that is why same thing happened with the Veda Bahu himself for 24. Veda is 4, Bahu is 2. It is, it is saying 4, 2, but it's actually D24. So anyway, this is known as Kha Veda Amsa, basically 0, 4 or Chatvar Amsa. It shows the alignment with the cosmic rhythm, rhythm or cosmic rhythm, divine rhythm or divine will. And D45 shows alignment with cosmic truth. This shows the deepest dharma within a person to stand for truth and stand for dharma. Whereas this is a very important chart. Uh, specifically, Parasra's dictum for D40 was uh, Shubha Shubham. He said, in Khavedam Sai, he says Shubha Shubham. That means auspicious and inauspicious things. Why? Why auspiciousness and inauspiciousness are seen in this? Because if you are, it shows whether you are, you are swimming against the cosmic rhythm and cosmic will or you are swimming with it. Somebody may be doing, may be a highly dharmic person doing highly dharmic things, but he may be struggling because the time is not right for the work he wants to do. Suppose this is a deep Kali Yuga and astrology is not supposed to be uh, understood correctly and somebody comes and basically tries to clarify. He, nobody will understand what he's saying and they may even criticize him. So he may just struggle his whole life. So irrespective of whether you're doing good good and dharmic work or not, if you if it's not meant to be at that time, you will struggle. That is why this chart shows auspiciousness and inauspiciousness. And this is a very, very important chart. And you can find the intersection of this chart with various other divisional charts to see whether in various areas of life one is swimming with the divine flow or against the divine uh, against what is meant to be at that time against the cosmic rhythm so this is a very important chart and finally there is one chart in this range uh, the 49 to 60 range and it is d60 it shows what gives bliss at the deepest level Really, we don't need anything to be blissful. Uh, we are basically self. If we just witness what is happening and not really want something or not want something, we, we are always in a state of bliss. But unfortunately, once we are captured, once we are imprisoned in an individual existence, once we forget that we are the all-pervading Brahman, Atman, once we have an individual existence, there is an agenda for their existence. So this is basically the deepest level agenda. What basically somebody thinks one needs to do. What somebody thinks will give him absolute bliss at the deepest level. So this is the chart that shows what binds one to existence as a separate being, as a, as a separate individual with separate wants, desires, agendas, etc. So this is the deepest, this is the subtlest level agenda of the person. And Parasya's dictum for this is Shashthyamsya Ekhla Mekshayet, which means in D60 chart, Shashthyamsya chart, see everything. So this is basically this, uh, I will not go into this in detail today. I will, I will, by the way, I will, in this, in this session, I wanted to set up the basics of divisional charts. And I will go through various divisional charts specifically in future videos. Specifically, I want to start with the D40 chart, the chart that shows Shubha Shubham, auspicious and inauspicious things. And this is actually, that is a chart I covered uh, at the Jyotish Kumbh Mela at Ashvijja Gurukulam in June. So I want to basically cover D40 in a separate video. I wanted to set, a, set it up in this video because Ashvijja Gurukulam session was a few hours, three hours. I want to basically do a couple of different videos. So this was the formative video and then in the next video probably I'll, I'll do D40. And D60 also I'll do in future. But one thing I want to state is, some astrologers say that D60 shows your previous life. It's not really about previous, and they also say it shows what is meant to be experienced in, in this life as a result of previous life. Bottom line is your whole chart is what is meant to be experienced in this life as a result of your various previous life. So it is basically not really wise to associate just D60 with that. D60 is really, as Parasha said, it shows everything because it shows the subtlest motivation behind everything that you do in your life.
and uh, just to summarize uh, these are the matters that that are shown by various divisional charts d1 or rashi chart shows physical existence d2 chart shows finances and wealth d3 shows siblings and of course everything related to siblings siblings career siblings success failure siblings uh, marital life siblings children etc and d4 it shows the residence and landed properties of the person d7 shows the progeny children of course grandchildren grand great grandchildren etc everything related to children children their success and failure their career their marriage everything relating to children and d9 shows dharma and marriage how you fulfill dharma in this in this world what you consider in this physical world as your dharma is it like building a temple or uh, or uh, uh, starting a big company uh, whatever you basically consider as dharma and marriage marriage is part of dharma it's a subset of dharma and then d10 is the work that you do in the world d12 is your parents and of course grandparents everything related to parents the success and failures of parents the career of parent careers of parents the parents parents etc and d16 shows your comforts and luxuries how you how you will enjoy things in your life and d20 is your spiritual sadhana and how you make spiritual progress in this life d24 is learning and knowledge and as i said earlier not restricted to what you learn in a formal setting like school or college or university basically any learning and scholarship you have any understanding you have of the world around you and of yourself then d27 is your strengths and weaknesses your what you are what you are prone to basically what you are uh, what you what you are drawn towards or drawn away from instinctively it shows all those things for example in my recent video about actor politician power kalyan i showed that in the d27 chart the second house of speech has saturn and rahu so his instinct is not to speak much he is a metabhashi he is a he is he speaks very sparingly that is an instinct but of course he may have to speak a lot he is an actor after all so he may have to speak but his instinct is not to speak and that is from the affliction of second house of speech in the d27 chart by saturn and rahu and of course when i cover d27 in a future video i will go through more detail with more examples and d30 is how you fight your inner enemies and how much you succeed d40 is alignment with the cosmic will cosmic flow cosmic rhythm divine rhythm whether you are swimming against the divine will or with the divine will how smooth things are for you in life or how hard things are for you in life and d45 is alignment with the cosmic truth how dharmic you are at the subtlest level and then d60 is the deep karmic momentum things that you really want to do or uh, want to accomplish in this life at a very subtle level so and of course what by what you really think that you must do is what binds you as well as it is what liberates you once you overcome that so it is basically the key to what liberates you and one important point i want to make is charts do not exist in a vacuum or in isolation they work together as i said earlier in the social security number example different charts are like different digits in a big number and together they identify the person they define the person so it's not like you just look at one chart d10 and say everything about career or, or look at d20 and say everything about the spiritual sadhana it is the important chart for that area of life but other charts intersect for example if there is a link between somebody's d10 and d20 maybe his career and the work he does in the society is linked to the spiritual sadhana that he does maybe if d12 and d10 have a link maybe the father or mother have a strong influence on the work that somebody does in the society maybe d10 and d2 have some strong links when i say links in terms of planets and signs we can find the links so and i will show in a future video with clear examples so in that case somebody's career is tightly linked to one's wealth and finances like that 
you and of course like i said earlier d40 is such an important chart d40 d45 and d60 are really important charts and you can combine them with various charts and particularly d40 because it shows shubhashubham auspicious and inauspiciousness so you can basically combine this uh, correlate this with the rashi chart d9 chart d10 chart etc and you can add depth to that uh, chart two people with the same d10 two twins having the same d10 chart may have different level of success in career based on the d40 chart lagna may have changed in the d40 chart so some planets that are intersecting with some key combinations in the d10 chart may be auspicious in one d40 and if the lagna changes by one sign for that other twin it may be inauspicious for that person so the same d10 chart may show some similarities in the work but different fortunes similarly same d9 chart may show bachelor in one case and a happily married person in another case based on intersection with the the correlation with the other chart so the these charts are important for uh, important but you really have to correlate with the other charts to be more confident and one thing i want to say brutally honestly is some astrologers do use d9 d10 etc but the thing is they often say rashi chart shows everything and these charts just confirm that that is really dumb it makes no sense whatsoever because if rashi chart shows everything why do you have all these other charts if the last digit of social security number or pan card number is everything why do you have other numbers why do you have other digits it's just dumb if it is not true that rashi chart shows everything and these charts confirm it more a better way to say it is as i said everything boils down to affect your physical and material existence so that is how it boils down to the rashi chart in the end but still it's not it's not enough you do need the other charts to arrive at the destiny of the person with some level of confidence without really putting too much weight on your intuition if you want to be scientific and use the teachings of rishis you have to use all these charts and give them equal importance and more importantly if you are looking at career d10 is even more important than rashi and as i said earlier it's not just this chart you have to look at d40 d45 d60 etc you have to look at links between various charts so i will talk about the links between various charts in a future video and also in my next very next video uh, not very next video next astrology theory video rather than i may make make other mundane political prediction videos but when i talk about pure astrology in the next video i will talk about the d40 chart i will show some examples in natal charts annual charts monthly charts daily charts i will show some examples of correlation between d40 and some other divisional charts how clearly it shows you what is happening and also i will show how you can use the dashas in that to basically see phases in life where somebody is struggling versus life is going smooth so i will i will do that in a future session so i just wanted to like i said set up and do the basics of divisional charts and some astrologers may tell you divisional charts are not important but they are wrong parashara maharshi did not talk about them for no reason they are very very important and logically common using common sense also unless you basically go to the granularity of 48 seconds you can't really identify the person uniquely there are so many destiny profiles born within 14 minute window or within a 2 hour window so what people normally do is just unscientific it's just illogical and if it works it, either their intuition is good or maybe it's not really working as well as they think it is so in any case it's not it's not useful or productive to talk about uh, the delusions of other people what is more important is to understand the rishings of uh, teachings of the rishi to understand the teachings of parashara maharshi as well as we can and one disclaimer i don't claim that i have understood everything perfectly but over the last 10 years several basic building blocks i am very confident now i think that i figured those out and there are some factors i am i'm still trying to figure out but what i have understood i will try to explain in a series of videos in coming coming weeks months and years and mother willing 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and please share with any other interested students and researchers of astrology so that uh, this sharing, this knowledge can be, uh, if it is shared with others, I am hopeful that it can, can contribute to a renaissance in the knowledge, in our understanding of Parasara's teachings in coming decade or two. Thank you very much. Om Tat Sat Sarvam Sri Krishnar Panamastu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Yavad Bhumandale Sanatana Dharma Vardhatu Viseshata Bhartakande America Vashe Tibet Shastrecha Om Parashraya Namaha Om Tat Sat Om Sarvam Sri Krishnar Panamastu